I like calculus by James Stewart, but I am more familiar with Thomas's calculus because Thomas's calculus was my first serious calculus book that I learned in 1987 when I was a freshman in a college. In this book, in chapter 10, you can find Teller series and the Maclaurin series. If you ever learned mathematics, everybody knows of what Teller series is. If we scroll down in chapter 49, we can find Teller series for two variables. You can scroll down here. Teller series formula for f of xy at point AB. To evaluate Teller series, we need higher order derivatives. If we can generate Teller series, we can use Frobenius method and solve such differential equations. To solve such differential equations, we have to generate power series or Teller series. My point is that if we can generate Teller series, we can solve second order ordinary differential equation of such form. It does not need to be second order derivative. It can be higher order derivative too. The problem is to generate Teller series, we need higher order derivatives. I have tested this method I wrote this paper back in 1990. In this paper, we solve differential equation using Frobenius method. In this paper, I generated the coefficients using basic programming language. I will implement algorithms for differential equation using Frobenius method, we will generate Taylor series on the fly. For such purpose, we need derivatives of higher order. In this case, implicitly defined functions are well perfect second order derivative. In some future sessions, I will generalize this algorithm to support higher order derivatives, even implicitly defined functions. Because I already have experience solving differential equations using Frobenius method, I am very confident that I can generalize it. Today is December 23rd, 2022. This is my 170th episode. For C++ 70, 20, 23, CUDA, SQL, OpenGL, OpenCL, TBB, Vulkan. If you have been watching some of my previous videos, you probably have noticed I have implemented binomial expansion or theorem. If you can implement binomial theorem, you can also implement multinomial theorem. If you can implement binomial and the multinomial theorem, you can also implement Taylor series not just for single or two variables, but for multiple variables. Because Taylor series expansion with multiple variables is the same multinomial theorem algorithmically. Algorithmically, Taylor series expansion of multiple variables is the same multinomial theorem. In the same manner, if we can implement second order derivative for implicitly defined functions, we can generalize for higher order derivatives. In our previous episode, in episode 169, second order derivatives to done, I made a flaw, a small flaw intentionally to discuss remove nth element from sequence that we will implement in this session. Please double click this link. This session continues.
from our previous episode, episode 169, we implemented second order derivative, but I made a minor flaw in this implementation. Show more, download current video source code, show in folder, unzip it, rename 170, copy the folder, paste it in your working directory, open up Visual Studio Code. CPP 17 2023 parallel folder 170 open up holiness.hpp newton.cpp control B if you scroll up you can find test second order derivative theory final we implemented this function in our previous episode in this implementation, I made a minor flaw intentionally. Paste it here. I will rename the function. Now, perfect. Copy, control end. Paste it here. Disable it. Now, our problem is more complex. Auto C. Now, it is spear. Copy. Based G, we have X, Y, G, or three variables. We assume Y is a dependent variable. Here, Z is set to zero, is set to zero, and fixed. So, y is unknown. Here, we have to provide z. Then, we can say z, z. We can fix our code like this. Also, we evaluate d square y over dx square. So I will change the name like this. Of course, we need one more. This is g. It should also be fixed like this. Now copy, copy. Based. This is dy2 over dz2, so it should be z. This is this one, this one, also this one. Now we have to provide c here. This is our previous implementation. With this, we can open any compiler. Clang plus plus, sed, c plus plus, 20, newton, dot cpp, ltbb, 12, oc, dot exe, hit enter. Crawl up, we missed operator here. 492 go 492 I missed operator here CLS we rebuild CLS C so this is d square over dx2 this value is correct the problem is here. This is d square y over dz square. This is the correct value, but our result is incorrect. The problem is that we solved this equation with respect to y. y is dependent variable here. 
if dependent variable is z, our implementation is correct. In this equation, dependent variable is not z, but we view y as dependent variable. We assume y is dependent variable. That's the cause of problem. We will address this issue. Scroll down. We will rename this function implicit derivatives second order generalized perfect. I will arrange side by side like this. In this file, control end. Scroll up. I will copy this function up to this point. Copy, paste, scroll up. We will rename this function generalized perfect. In this function, the problematic part is here. To fix this problem, we need to implement one more function. Here, template std size t n type name type type elements. Please understand, n is not type. Type is sddt, n is value. Type is type. Elements are not type. Elements are values or instances of type. So, n is called non-type template parameter. Elements are called non-type template parameters. Context per, we do not know return type yet. So keyword auto, remove n's element from sequence. So we need one sequence, std integer sequence. Type elements. This is right. I will unindent here. For example, our integer sequence right is over type int. For example, zero, one, two, zero. 4x, 1, 4y, 2, 4z, n is dependent variables index. For example, 1, 4y. From this list, we have to remove number 1. 1, 4y, 4x, y, z, if we assume y is dependent variable, then from this sequence, we have to remove 1. In such case, we can use requires and should be size of elements. Size of elements is 1, 2, 3, 3. So n should be less than size of elements. With this, we return by calling this function. Initially, we pass empty list. This is left, this is right. So we pass one sequence 
for left. Another sequence for right. We pass two arguments here. Namespace hidden. End of namespace hidden. So it should be hidden. Don't miss semicolon. Now here we return context for all of this is our function remove nth element sequence. In this case, this is left. Here, template std size t n type name type type name has no it should be of a type has this is none types then type ends type tails so left sequence has right sequence ends tails I say left so this is our function arguments. Now we are in the function block. So in the left sequence we have has here. In the right sequence we have ends element then tails. If context per n is zero, if this n is zero, return we form a new sequence from the left. This is left sequence. Then we remove nth element, this element. When n is zero, we remove nth element from the right. But we append tails. This is type. We have to return an instance when n is zero. When n is zero, we removed nth element from the right sequence. Then, using left sequence up to this point, by removing nth element from the right sequence, we appended the tails here. Then we return. We effectively removed nth element. We removed nth element. Okay. Then else if context for size of tails equals zero, it means this list tails. Tails are zero elements. Then we return including ends like this. From the left sequence 
we appended ends here, then return. Else, n is neither zero and tails are neither zero. Then return this function recursively. Now we move nth element to the left. This is new right. This is new left. It should be an instance. New left. Okay, this is new left. And uh, this is new right. So, we are calling this function recursively. But, we have to decrement n by 1. We are using recursion. With this, we implemented remove nth element from sequence. You have to learn such programming method. You have to be familiar with such programming practice. With this, control end. I said this is the problematic part. In my previous video, I explained independent count. This is independent variable count is less than argument count because in this argument counts, in this counts, independent variables and dependent variables are added together. So, independent variable count is 1 less than argument count. Now, we don't need this variable. Scroll down. Here, this part is the problematic. Now, we create sequence context per or sequence pull cpt create sequence we pass arg count so this sequence represent variables now context per or sequence remove nth element from sequence we have to remove dependent variable dependent variables index is dp idx okay so in this function call DEP IDX represent dependent variable. For example, Y. So from this sequence, full sequence of variables, I say sequence of variables. We remove independent variables index. This is type. So we need to create instance. This is a function we just created. Then we call this function second order derivative by passing I say 
sequence of independent variables. Okay, we pass sequence of independent only variables. Then return. Second derivative is this lambda function. In this lambda function, we are passing this sequence. This sequence is this argument. Sequence of independent variables is an instance of this argument used in this function. Only independent variables index is left. To test it, std see out sequence of variables. We can display like this. CPZ and there. In the same manner, we can display sequence of independent variables. CPZ and there. After debugging, we can disable and disable these two lines. With this, we build again. Now, let's go up. No matching function call. Remove and element. Sadly, I missed one mistake. Control home. I missed passing n. Okay, we build again. CLS C. So this is d square y over dx square, second over derivative with respect to x. This is d square y over dz square second order derivative with respect to z. It matches. In this case, second order derivative with respect to x. This is second order derivative with respect to In such case, y, this y is regarded as a dependent variable. Our result matches with algebraic solution. Please notice this part. Sequence of variables 0, 1, 2. From this sequence of variables, we removed 1. So 0, 2. 1 represent dependent variable y. From this list, we removed 1, the dependent variables index. To implement our algorithm, we need remove nth element from sequence. After testing, we can disable this part. We will try with the Microsoft compiler. CL, EHSC, SED, C++ training. It should be lowercase. Newton.cpp fe m.exe hit enter CLS M. Now we have very pretty neat solution for second order derivative for implicitly defined functions.